Welcome back everybody to the Arizona Diamondbacks franchise here on MLB 15 and we are here in the first week of June at the first year player draft. Uh, if you guys don't watch uh, any of my other franchises then you guys want to know that I love rebuilding in the draft. Um, I'm not a guy that's really going to go trade in a bunch of players to build your team and sign free agency. I'm a guy that likes uh, getting young talent and building through the draft. So I decided to show you guys some of my picks. So we did have the first overall pick because we had the worst record in baseball last year. So we had a lot of guys to look at and really we had a huge decision to make because this is going to be our next A prospect guy. We don't have many A potential guys. So I had any position I could go to. The only positions I didn't need really was first base, third base because we got a few guys up there and center field I like AJ Pollock and he's been doing really well for us so he's going to be staying there but... I decided to go with the corner outfielder for our first overall pick, and we went with a guy named Vinny Marillo. So he's a corner outfielder. He's 18 years old, and one thing I loved about him from the second I saw him is that he's got already high potential, obviously, and he's been to be in the major leagues next season, at the start of next season. It's a 74 overall, 74 overall to start, which would already be like our best corner outfielder, and you can see what his projected con potentials are. He's got eight projected to be 80 contacts, 70 power. Those are some crazy numbers. That's something that could put maybe like a 280 to 300 average with 20 plus home runs. His speed and fielding aren't where I want it to be um, fielding wise, but he'll be a great hitter. He should fit well. And if we can get him as uh, fielding up, then he should be in the corner outfield and should be very good for us. Next up, we went with pitching and you can never have too much pitching. So uh, this guy... Jack Judd, he's pretty close to an A potential, six foot uh, right hander. He his MLB ETA is a little bit higher, but you know this guy pretty much got um, good stats all around. Uh, nothing really too like that's like over the top. Like he's got 87 velocity, 68 control, 83 break, 62 makeup. It'll take him a little bit to get up to the majors, but once he does, he should be able to fin the rotation should he pan out. Third run, we ended up selecting a second baseman, and we never don't really have a set second baseman right now. Right now, it's Chris, uh, correction, Aaron Hill. So, I mean, our second baseman situation is nothing outstanding. We could possibly get a new second baseman. So, we ended up picking up this guy. He's been to have some good contact. Be a decent fielder for the most part, something like we can work on, but he'll be up to the majors pretty fast, and he we'll see where he goes from there. All right, so rounding out these last couple rounds of these drafts, uh, we take a, took a reliever pitcher. So um, relieving is something that's overlooked a little bit in draft. This guy looks like he could be solid. And lastly, we got a pretty good steal, 84 potential starting pitcher, uh, projected to be up in 2023. But he's got some great velocity, and we wanted to see what happens there. But moving on to the game now, we're going to be at uh, – Chase Field taking on the New York Mets and special game today. We're going to be wearing these um, beautiful throwbacks, um, a uniform that I really miss, these purple ones. These uniforms were one of the best of the baseball at time, and I really miss these uniforms, to be honest. Um, not really too thrilled about the red uniforms. So when these purple ones left, I was pretty upset, but now they wear it every Thursday home game. So this is a Thursday home game, and we're playing the New York Mets, so I had to do it. But... Taking a look at the New York's Mets starting lineup, uh, David Wright is hitting 337, Michael Kadire hitting 315, two guys that you have to watch out for. And we'll be pitching a Archie Bradley on the mound. Uh, he's been struggling in his rookie season, 4.69 ERA in 10 games, 2-5 and five record. So looking to pounce back against the New York Mets in this game as we move on to the top of the first inning. David Wright is up. He's got an 0-2 count on him. One away. The pitch from Bradley. And this one is hit a ton to left field. Going to give chase to this one at the wall. And he's going to have some trouble with it as this will end up going for a ground rule double. So David Wright continues to raise his average. He's at second base now. And Michael Kadire would end up striking out on the next at bat. So that's a big out. Getting Kadire out. Another great hitter. But now Lucas Duda is up a 3-1 count, and Duda is going to hit this one past the third baseman. And now left fielder is going to have another trouble. That's David Peralta out there. Runner would score, so two miscues by Peralta will give the Mets a 1-0 lead. So now the Grandy man is up, Curtis Granderson, and he's going to end up hitting this one high to right field. Trumbo going to get under this one. He makes the play, and the Diamondbacks do get out of the inning, allowing one run. So we move to the bottom of the first inning now. Taking a look at the Diamondbacks, A.J. Pollock is not in the starting lineup. He's got the night off, so Aaron Hill will be leading off. 
for the Diamondbacks and Ender and Ciarte will be batting second and playing center field. Another thing to note, Archie Bradley batting eighth instead of uh, Nick Ahmed. And Archie Bradley's batting 429. That's the reason for it. And on the mound for the Mets is Bartolo Colon. Four and one in five games is a 3.06 ERA. Um, Bartolo Colon surprisingly is good. Um, he's getting up there in age, but he's still been pretty good for the Mets in real life and in this game. But uh, Colon is facing Paulie Goldschmidt, and Goldschmidt is going to ground this one to short, and this one will be thrown on. So the Mets get a 1 2 3 inning to start off the ball game. So we head to the top of the second now. 2 2 count to Travis Darno, and Darno is going to end up striking out. So Archie Bradley trying to work out with this runner on base. Uh, next up is Juan Lagares, and Lagares is going to strike out looking on that. Uh, circle change and then up is Bartolo Colon 0-1 count and Colon is going to flash the bat this one is going to be hit into the gap rolling towards the pool this is extra bases and this will end up driving in our run so Bartolo Colon an unlikely source is going to get an RBI double and the Mets take a 2-0 lead top of the second Daniel Murphy up and Murphy is going to hit the same exact spot in Ciarte on the run going to give it a dive he won't get to the ball and now Colon is going to pretty much jog into home plate. And that will be a triple for Daniel Murphy. Mets go up 3 to nothing now. As R.G. Bradley is trying to struggle. Now David Wright up. And Yasmani Tomas is going to have an absolute brain fart and throw it to home on the um, two-out play. So that's going to make it 4 nothing. And now this is going to make it 5 nothing. A bad route by David Peralta. Will allow another runner to score, and the Mets have completely opened this game wide open. As now it is a five nothing game, the RG Rally still got to get out of this inning as he's facing Lucas Duda, and Duda is gonna hit this one far into left field. Peralta will get under this one, and he will finally make a play. As that'll be the third out, but damage is done as the Mets take a five to nothing lead in the second inning. So heading to the bottom of the, bottom of the second, Bartolo Colon's got a little bit of padding. Facing Yasmani Tomas, and Tomas is going to hit this one into the gap. This one will roll all the way to the wall. Tomas has got extra bases, and he gets into second base to the double. So the Dimebacks getting some runners in scoring position for Tuffy Gosowich, and Gosowich is going to hit this one into the hole. The throw from short is going to be in time, and the Mets escape danger, so it will remain a 5-0 ball game going into the third. Flashing head to the fourth now, Daniel Murphy back up. And he's going to hit this one deep to right field, giving Chase his Trumbo still back. He's going to leap, and this one's going to hit high off the wall and goes for a ground rule double. So now Michael Kadire is up, and Kadire is going to hit this one into left field. But a beautiful running play by Peralta will make the third out as Peralta finally starting to make some plays in the outfield. But now Lucas Dewitt is back up, and oh my goodness, he is going to hit this one way out and way gone. As this makes it a 6 nothing game off the bat of Lucas Duda. A home run and R.G. Bradley just not having a great game. And his skipper is going to see that he's going to end up pulling him from the game. Not the greatest of stars for Bradley at all. As he's pretty much in the line for the loss for his 6th loss this season. So we bring in Daniel Hudson in the top of the 5th. Long relief pitcher. And first battery faces is uh, Curtis Granderson who ends up striking out. And later is Juan Lagares. 1-2 count, 2 away, and Ligaris is going to go down in the changeup. Hudson gets out of the inning. As we move to the top of the 6th now, 0-2 count. And this one is going to be hit into right field, giving Chase's Trumbo. And Trumbo is going to make a diving play, but he will not get to the ball as this goes by the pool. And that will be a triple as that is Juan Ligaris, and he's going to get into third base. So now there's a runner in scoring position for the Mets. Daniel Murphy up with one away, and this one's going to be hit deep enough to score Ligares. Now I'm going to see if Trumbo can make the catch. This one's way back, and it'll be caught. Almost a home run. Almost Daniel Murphy. He could have had two home runs in this game, but this is not the ballpark that you want to be uh, missing home runs, as it is a very deep ballpark. But that's going to end up making it 7 to nothing now, as now Lucas Duda is back up. 1-2 count, and Duda, he's making a bid for his second home run of the game. This one is far. It is back. And Trumbull will not get to this one. And that Lucas Stewart is going to have his second home run of the game. That'll make it 8 to nothing, And the Mets continue to pound it on the Dimebacks. As Margie Rally just not having a game, good game. And this is a rude um, awakening for this purple jersey. That maybe the Dimebacks shouldn't wear it anymore. Maybe it brings bad luck. But Gerald Laird coming in as a pinch hitter in the bottom of the 7th. With 2 away, 1-1 one, one count. And Laird is going to ping this one to shortstop. Flores is going to throw it to 2nd. 
and it'll be just in time so the Mets get out of the inning once again. Cologne continued to spin a gem as we move on to the eighth inning. Alan Webster in the game as he would end up getting the um, one, two, three inning. But now Nick Ahmed comes up in the bottom of the eighth. He hits a ball deep to left field and it is gone. Nick Ahmed is going to hit a home run into the second row in left field bleachers. As a little bit of life in the Diamondbacks as they finally get on the scoreboard. 8-1. to one, Back to the top of the order. Bottom of the eighth. Aaron Hill is up. And this is the next pitch. And Hill is going to go deep into the first row. So the Diamondbacks go back to back. Show a little bit of life as it is to 8-2. And <clears throat> now up is Paul Goldschmidt. Can he hit a home run? And Goldie is going to hit this one into left field. This one is going to one-hop the wall. Goldschmidt's got extra bases. And he pulls into second base with a double. So Colon finally starting to collapse here in the bottom of the eighth, and he's facing his money, Tomas, 1-0 count, and Tomas is going to hit this one into left field, and it'll be tracked down by the Grandy Man, as the Mets only allowed two runs in that inning. So we move to the top of the ninth, Webster's still on the mound, and this one is hit a mile. This one is by Michael Kadire, and it is going to go off the foul pole, and that is going to be a two-run home run for Kadire, home run number 198 on his career. As we move to the bottom of ninth, Buddy Carlisle going to come in to finish the game. 13 games, only with a .82 ERA as he's having a great season. Facing David Peralta right now, 2-1 count, and Peralta's going to end up singling up the middle. So Diamondbacks trying to get this long rally coming up as they got a little bit of a while to go. It is a 10-2 game, but Tuffy Gosewich is up, 2-2 count, and Gosewich is going to single into left field. So that puts a second man on for the Diamondbacks, so two men on now. Still the bomb in the order, so the Diamondbacks can try and get some pinch hitters going. AJ Pollock will get into the game as he was um getting all the night off, and now he's going to be coming with the game on the line. 3 2 count to Pollock, and Pollock is going to ground this one down the third baseline. Tough play for David Wright. Wright's going to try and throw it to second base, but he's already saving. The bases are loaded now. So now Nick Ahmed trying to have a little bit more late inning magic, and this will not do the job as this one is hit to right field. They're not going to test the arm. Of Kadir as he's going to throw it home. So bases remain loaded now as Aaron Hill is up back to the top of the order. 0 1 count. And Hill has a drive deep to left field. Grandy's going to get under this one. They're going to be sending the runners now. But the first base runner is going to go too early. And he is doubled off. And that is how the game is going to end. As just a poor base running mistake. And the Mets end up clobbering the backs at home 10 2. Uh, Bartolo Colon spins a gem, and RG Bradley is going to fall to uh, one and two and six on the season. So, unfortunately, a rough game for the Diamondbacks. As this has been a rough season overall, but hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys enjoyed, it, give it a like, leave some comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. There's nothing like the view from the Chiefs. Call it a win, go off to toast the boys again.